This is the Global Travel Channel Podcast Show. I am your host, Mark Philpot, and today's show is a bonus episode. Hello everyone and welcome to the show. Something today a little bit different for the regular listeners. You probably know that I post my shows on Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays. Today is a Thursday, so what are we up for? Well, I thought it was time to continue my dedication and commitment to changing my life for the better. And in the recent days I took on the mighty goal of doing a 48 hour fast. So in today's episode, I thought I would share how that journey has been for me. So I'd like to start off by just saying that uh, everything I'm sharing today is not uh, giving advice. I'm no professional nutritionist. I'm just a 55-year-old man that wants to make himself better every single day in every aspect of my life. So on the basis of that, let's get started, folks. Okay, so some background first of all. When I was uh, younger, and I'm talking about in my teens and all the way through my 20s, 30s and 40s, I had a very active sporting career. I was a professional tennis player. I was a semi-professional triathlete doing Ironman triathlons all over the world. And I've run a lot of marathons and half marathons in my life. In fact, the last count, I've run 69 marathons full distance and around about 56 half marathons across the world. I've also done ultra distance races, kayaked across the oceans, and done all sorts of uh, endurance events. So from a very young age, my body was always moving, very active, and I also had an addiction. And other than the addiction to doing sports, I had an addiction to sugar. And that stayed with me pretty much all through my life. So. I used to be able to go out and run for hours and come home and eat uh, two litres of ice cream. Yes, two litres at one sitting. I used to be able to demolish bags and bags of salt and vinegar chips. I used to eat fish and chips every second day almost and pizza and all those other things that were terribly bad for me. But because I was burning so many calories every day, I justified to myself that I was okay. The fact was I wasn't. And for a very long time, I was in denial about all the aspects of what that rubbish that I was putting into my body was actually doing to me. So I have been through a number of epiphanies in my life and I guess now living on a sailboat and being surrounded by nature and having the opportunity to learn from others. And there's been people come and go in my life recently who have taught me lots of lessons and Those lessons are things that I've needed to take on board, but I wasn't either ready or I didn't know how. And again, those in my eyes are just excuses. So in the last few months, I've made a concerted effort to really get my life into shape in the areas where I feel as though I was really letting myself down. And I think this is the most important thing that I want to share today is that This is all about me. This is about doing it for myself. I want to hold myself accountable for the way I feel, the energy levels that I have every day, the things that I'm going to be capable of doing in my life. I I want to remain active at a very high level for as long as I possibly can. And with the nutrition regime that I had before and the way that I was going about things, it was all heading in the wrong direction. So... There's a history in my family of heart disease, kidney disease, and also cancer. So the warning signs are there. And very irregularly, I guess, we don't always listen to these warning signs. So I went through a very uncomfortable and eye-opening experience a few years ago when I spent the last 25 days of my father's life sitting beside his bedside at hospital and basically right up until he took his last breath I was there with him and that process in itself has given me a lasting long memory because guess what 
my father was just like me when he was younger. He was running around doing sports and at a very high level. And he was also eating a lot of rubbish. And he was an ice cream man. He was a chocolate man. And I'm not talking about one or two here. I'm talking about lots and lots of the stuff that he was putting into his body every day. So in sitting next to my father's hospital bed as he went through his last days of his life, we had discussions about these sorts of things. And I asked him a lot of times about regrets that he had in life. And one of the things that popped up from time to time was the regret that he didn't look after himself better from a nutrition point of view. So that was one of the many catalysts that I've had to step up and be honest about the situation. So I thought I'd take the opportunity in this podcast episode today to continue my theme of recent times of being extremely authentic and raw in a public domain where people can listen to what I've got to say about my truth. And my truth is that I've been living in absolute denial about my diet and my nutrition plan for many, many years. And even over recent years when I've said to myself and I've been committed to buying more healthy products in the supermarket and to get myself back on track, I've always been sneaking in that box of chocolates or that tub of ice cream or those packet of chips. Yes, I've always done it. And even though I might have cut down a lot, which has been the truth, I haven't been able to eradicate that poison that is sugar from my life. So... I've recently come across people who have inspired me, and Alan, this is for you, Louisa, this is for you, and have given me uh, an open door, I guess, to a lot of healthy ways that I can adopt in my life to get myself on track. So a few months ago, I took up a new kind of fitness regime, and that's been going extremely well. But what I noticed was I was still carrying some of the fat that had been there because of this glucose addiction that I have. So I decided that I had to take uh, some steps to try and eradicate this in my own mind, first of all, that I had to become committed to taking on this journey. And secondly, I had to be dedicated And dedication can be a hard thing sometimes. Having run a lot of marathons, you don't just get up in the morning and go and run a marathon. There's a very extensive training process behind running a marathon. And if you want to do a good marathon, meaning a fast time, then you have to go to another level again. And every time I trained for a marathon, I would take up to four, five, six months out of my life schedule to dedicate to running a marathon as fast as I possibly can. And that's a lot of time to be committed to reaching a particular goal but you know what when I sit down and think well hang on my life is going to be longer than four or five or six months why should I give up on that dedication level just after six months and that's what I was doing I was going in and running these races and then almost immediately afterwards I was back on the junk food again and this was a cycle that has been going on for years and years so folks it's time to change the cycle And if you're out there listening today and you have trouble breaking your cycles of bad habits, and let's call it a bad habit, I consider um, an addiction to sugar a bad habit, just my own personal opinion. You're going to get a lot of those today, my personal opinion. So I thought, okay, it's time to, to change this. And the first step in the process was, and I think this is very important to share, is that I didn't go from doing no fasting to doing a massive long multiple day fasting no I started to introduce intermittent fasting to my life and this was a really good first step I felt because for eight hours a day I could eat what I wanted and for the remaining 16 hours I would fast and I typically did this by having my evening meal around six o'clock and then not eating again until the following morning And late into the following morning, obviously, if you count 16 hours after that, 6 o'clock, it's 10 o'clock in the morning before you can eat again. So I was having my dinner meal at 6 p.m. and I was having my next food intake at 10 a.m. the next morning. Now, I've been doing this for probably six months now and it's become routine, it's become a habit and I didn't get hungry 
But the problem I found was I was still going for a high carb pasta, junk food type diet. Junk food, when I say junk food, I don't mean McDonald's and KFC and all that stuff. I don't eat that stuff. It's more like the chocolate, the ice cream, um, the, the sweets, and a, lot, and a lot of foods with high sugar content. That was really what I was basing my diet on. So even though I was doing this intermittent fasting, I wasn't optimizing the return on investment as you want to look at it. So I wasn't getting out of it what I was intending to or what I potentially could have. So then I thought, right, I really want to break the cycle. I want to go cold turkey. I want to get this sugar infixation that I have off my out of my body and out of my mind more importantly that I needed sugar then I needed these highs during the day and I think this is another thing that's quite important in the process and understanding it because of my lifestyle I have a lot of adrenaline in my life so I'm exercising a lot where I'm pumped up I've got the blood flowing I felt fantastic and it gives me a natural high and that's what I've enjoyed about doing sports for so many years that I get a natural high from it but the downsides is I've tried to keep that natural high going by putting so much sugar into my body. And of course, I've had wicked down downsides to that. So when you come off those highs, you have incredible lows. And I look back now at some of the times in my life where I suffered from depression and anxiety and feeling really, really bad about myself and my life. I think a lot of that can be contributed to the diet that I was on or the the horrible food that I was putting into my body. So it goes without saying that when you look in the mirror and you're honest with yourself about what it is you're putting into your mouth every day and how you're continually doing that, it only makes sense that if it is bad, it's going to do bad things for you. And we all know that there's so much information out there on the internet and on YouTube and all these other places and you've only got to talk to other people that are on healthy eating regimes and there's so many options and so many things to consider and I'm not here to preach about any diets in particular or anything because that's not what this is about this is about just sharing my journey on how a 48 hour fast affected me so that gives you a little bit of background in terms of where I was coming from when it came to approaching this 48 hour fast I'd gone through a number of years many many years even decades of eating rubbish I tried a couple of times to stop and to, I guess, uh, go cold turkey before. It didn't work because I didn't use certain processes. And you know what? In all honesty, I don't think I was that committed at the time. So I think that's the major, major thing here. I've never been more committed in my life right now to get myself into optimal condition again. And... That's come about, about for a number of reasons. Uh, my my physical training and exercise is going so well again. I, w I do want to get back to a stage where I can compete in races. I'm not saying marathons or anything, but I want to compete again because I love doing that. I love the discipline about training for a particular goal. Um, I have an extremely happy life with my podcasting um, show. I talk to amazing guests all over the world every day. So I get natural highs from that. So I love what I do. I love where I live on a sailboat. So the last part of the equation for me is actually to get this dietary situation sorted out. So in looking at how to do that, I thought, right, I'm going to do a 48-hour fast. And I'd read a lot about 48-hour fast. I spoke to my neighbor, Alan, about it, who's had a lot of experience in the nutritional space. And I decided to make a commitment. So a few days ago, I had my last meal, if you like, at 1 p.m. in the afternoon, and I started. And it's really interesting, I guess, from a psychological point of view, and that's one of the things that I wanted to share today about my journey, was the psychological approach. I didn't look at that last meal thinking, oh gosh, I'm not going to eat again for 48 hours. This is going to be terrible. I ate that lunch as though it was just another lunch. And I didn't try and trick my body into thinking that it had to wait 48 hours for another meal. So obviously for me, the next important or the first important milestone of the 48 hour fast journey was going to be around dinner time where I would normally sit down and have my dinner. 
And when that time came on the first night, I decided to take my dog out for a walk at that particular time where I would normally sit down for dinner. So I took on some exercise, uh, put my mind somewhere else. I went out and did a meditation session and I came back from that feeling very relaxed, very, very good. I was in a very good headspace. And I went to bed that evening um, not feeling hungry at all, feeling really, really good. I had a great night's sleep and a lot of people who have done multiple day fast will talk about insomnia as being a potential side effect um, but I had no issue with sleeping on my first night. Now I woke up in the next morning at the same time I normally wake up. I went out and I did exercise uh, with my dog again in the morning and I came back and obviously my body would be ready for breakfast. And not having anything that morning, I, I was fine. So an important part of the regime that I put into place was drinking lots and lots of water. So from the 1 p.m. start the previous day, I was gulping down 350 mils of water per hour. So that was my water intake, and that's what I measured it out to be. And every three or four hours, I would have a cup of green tea. And that was just something else uh, from a fluid base that I was putting into my body. But that's all I had. I didn't have anything else. So it was water. And every three or four hours, uh, around about half a cup to a three quarters of a cup of green tea. I'm not a big tea guy. So <laughs> that was um, what I had. So sailing well through the first, uh, the next morning. And I got round to the 24 hour mark. And again, it was around lunchtime. And I was feeling really good. So I won't say that I wasn't hungry. I was hungry, but I wasn't starving. And there's a big difference, as I'll get to mention shortly. So I cruised through the 24-hour mark, and everything was going really, really well. I don't know about you, but I always find that period around 3 o'clock to 4, 4 o'clock in the afternoon very, very difficult. And that's normally when I would go reaching for chocolate or something sweet to give me that kick again and I'm not into soda drinks and all that sort of stuff I gave that up years ago I, I had one every now and again but I don't have it now and nowadays it's more the chocolate that I would go for at that particular time of the day so I got around to about three or four o'clock and yes again it started to get difficult I started to get hungry and my mind started going into warp speed about wanting sugar. And it was really, really difficult. I had about an hour and a half where I was really teetering on the edge of whether I could do this or not. Anyway, I pushed through. And I got through to dinner time again around 6 o'clock. And then at 7 o'clock, I got this enormous hunger knock. I was just... I was so hungry and my mind went into this state of shock in terms of I've got to have something to eat. I'm so hungry, I've got to eat. So I at 7 o'clock I went and made myself a bowl of pasta. That's right. 26 hours after the start of the fast, I gave up. And I ate a bowl of pasta. And as soon as I finished that bowl of pasta I sat down and I almost I was almost in tears I was so upset with myself for a number of reasons first of all I thought I had more willpower than that <clears throat> I've gone through lots of struggles and different things in my life and come out the other side and not given up but I was really shocked with the ease in which I gave in to this hunger knock around seven o'clock so I ate a bowl of pasta, it was gone within five minutes, and I immediately said to myself, right, that's it, I'm going to start again, and I'm going to go 48 hours without stopping. So, not understanding the consequences of this, if I had only had one meal in 26 hours, then my body was already starting from a state of depletion, and we will talk about a state, the state known as ketosis, which is a metabolic process. When the body doesn't have enough glucose for energy, it burns store, stored fat. And the results in a buildup of acids called ketones within the body. And some people encourage ketosis by following a diet called ketogenic or keto diet. 
other people try and get into that state by doing extreme amounts of exercise. So I was trying to, by the way of this fast, trying to get my body into a state of ketosis. And that's where my body would learn to burn fat that it has stored, which I had a bit of, rather than burning the glucose that I was creating from the food I was eating. So fast number two started from 7 p.m. or just after 7 p.m. on that day. And after the bowl of pasta was gone, I thought, right, that's it. I'm, I'm back into this. Now, a couple of things that I experienced which were significant, I think, in the process now looking back on it with hindsight. The first one is starting the fast in the evening compared to the middle of the day, I think, is really, really important. Because you can go to bed and you can rest your body and you don't feel as though the energy is missing or you don't have that afternoon hunger knock that I had on the first experience. So for me, starting at 7 p.m. was really good um, compared to the previous effort that I made. So the next morning when I woke up and I had been going for 12 hours, 7 o'clock in the morning, I felt fantastic. I felt really, really good. So I went out, did my usual running exercises and Pilates and things that I do in the morning, came back and started straight into the water and green tea process and went throughout the day very easy right up to the 24 hour mark. So this is the second attempt at my 48 hour fast. Now, I've been working during the day just like I normally do on my podcast show. I've been do exerting the same amount of energy. I wasn't just laying on my bed trying to waste the time by. I was burning the same amount of energy as I would every day, taking the dog for walk, going for exercise. I didn't change my daily routine because of my fast. So that's something else I wanted to share. A lot of people that I've read about their experience with 48 hour fast, they'll actually take things easy, sit around stop exercising if they're a regular exerciser etc i didn't do that i continued to do my normal daily activities um, unchanged from before so second attempt 24 hours in feeling fantastic and then going back to bed again so getting through the next night was very easy i had a, a slight bit of hunger but again not going anywhere near into starvation mode and when I woke up at the 36 hour mark, or when I got out of bed and I started my daily activities around 7 o'clock in the morning, I felt really, really good. There was no issue whatsoever. So only 12 hours to go to get to 48 hours. Now what I hadn't anticipated was the effect of that first fast. So when I had done already 26 hours before I had that bowl of pasta, I didn't realize that ultimately here I was heading to a situation where I would do 72 hours of fasting with one small bowl of pasta in between. And I didn't understand or know what that potential impact would be. Now, if you're ask, asking me about how I felt during this process, well, there was all sorts of sensations going on. And I must say some of them were quite weird. I started to feel my hair in a different way I started to feel my fingernails in a different way I started to feel my nose in a different way I started to have a lot of gunk coming out of my nose um, and in essence now looking back on it it was the start of my body cleansing itself and we we all know of the word detox well here's some of the symptoms that I experienced during my second attempt at the 48 hour fast so 36 hours in and I did a normal day's worth of work. I had a podcast show going coming up and the exciting thing was that the actual finish line for me with my 48 hour fast was at the end of the podcast show. So I knew that if I could get to the beginning of the podcast show, my mind would be so busy on everything else that by the time I finished the show, I could celebrate that I had achieved my 48 hour fast. So what happened was during the day, um, things were going really well. I went for a long walk around about uh, 1 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock during the day. And when I came back from that, I started to fall in a hole and I started to feel really hungry again. So it was a very similar experience that I had the night before on the 7 o'clock when I took to the pasta. It got that bad. So what I did was I doubled up on the green tea. I had two cups of green tea in a row. 
washed down with a lot of water, about 300 mils of water, and I started to feel okay again. And and this was a case of the the stomach feeling just completely empty. I was starting to feel lightheaded as well. You get a bit of a, a muzzy feeling in the head from this as you go deeper and deeper into it, or at least I do. And the deeper I went into it, the more muzzy my kind of head head would go. And when I woke up in the morning, I would feel really bad in bed. But when I got out of bed and got moving, I started to feel really, really good. And when I talk about really good, I mean really good. So a lot of people talk about the ketosis flu, and I was starting to have a bit of a cough and snivel. But it didn't really feel like flu symptoms to me. It was just like a cleansing process. So again, this is just all that I was experiencing through the process. So I had about an hour and a half of that second afternoon, which was really, really difficult. And my goodness, you know, the, what the mind can tell you, what stories the mind, what excuses the mind can come up with for you to be weak and to give in and, and to stop chasing that goal. It's incredible. But this time I went into a different mindset. I went into my old sporting mindset. And it was a bit like when I used to hit the wall in a marathon around that 20 kilometer mark and you started to lose all your glycogen stores there and it's a very similar experience in fact and and in the first attempt I hadn't related it to that and in the second attempt I did relate it to that and I thought okay well I know what to do I've run so many marathons I know what to do to push my mind through this this part of the race because this is going to be gone very soon I'm going to feel I'm going to come out the other side and feel okay and I'm going to be able to make it. So that's exactly what I did. I went into sports mode and I focused on the goal that I had to achieve, that I wanted to achieve and how great it would feel at the end and all the exhilaration that I would get from it. And I started to get rid of the negative thoughts out of my mind. And I started to stop thinking about eating and being hungry. I started to think about the joy and celebration at seven o'clock that night that I was going to be able to enjoy by myself um, that I'd done that goal. And that's exactly what happened. So after I got through that difficult one hour, one and a half hour period of that second day, I literally raced to the finish line. And in fact, for the last hour and a half or two hours leading up to seven o'clock, I thought, you know what? I could do another 24 hours of this. I feel really, really good. But I didn't. I thought that for the first time in doing this, I would stop at 48 hours. And going back to what I said earlier, I'd actually been going for 72 hours with one bowl of pasta in between. I thought that was enough for my first attempt at this really long fasting process. So just after seven o'clock last night, I achieved my goal of doing a 48 hour fast without crumbling. Now, what does it mean? How did I feel overall? Well, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I felt fantastic because I didn't. Um, my body is going through a process of saying, hey, you've turned off the sugar fix that's been in your body for the last 50 odd years. And that's a massive amount of time. My cells and my system have been so used to getting that white poison that I've just become accustomed to it being in my body. I haven't felt what it's like to not have that in my body. I don't I couldn't tell you what the feeling would be like even though I've run all these marathon races and then I've got to the end and felt absolutely fantastic, I've still gone and loaded up on sugar again. So my body has been riding that wave for decades and decades and decades. And now for the first time in my entire life journey, I'm shutting that door. I'm saying no more. So part of the process yesterday was to go out and to stock my cupboards with things that are non-sugar based and healthy for me to eat. And that means vegetables and lots of them and, and nuts. And nuts were something that I wasn't big on. I've never been a crazy guy on nuts, but I've loaded up on nuts. So last night when I broke my fast, I had some nuts and about a handful of nuts. And I had some a small bowl of scrambled eggs. That's how I broke my fast. And that's all I had with some water. And my body responded pretty well to that. I had a great night's sleep last night and I woke up this morning feeling terrible. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I had a great sleep. No problem with the sleep process. But as soon as I woke up, I felt absolutely terrible. I had a very fuzzy head and mind. Um, I felt as though I had a hangover from drinking all, all night. But obviously that wasn't the case. 
unless I was sleepwalking and I well I don't have alcohol on the boat so that's that's not the reason so yeah I felt terrible but I, as soon as I got up and I went out for a run and I started to clear my head everything became fine and it has been ever since so I've now started on my new diet so sugar's gone processed sugar is gone natural sugars obviously I'll have but processed sugar is gone and I'm starting a new life journey at the age of 55 and I'm very proud of it because I'm completely dedicated to this I'm as dedicated to this as I have been for all the sports events that I've trained for in my life Um, but it's beyond that this is a life change choice this is a choice that's going to make me healthier and hopefully keep me alive longer so I can enjoy my amazing life that I have today and all of the things that I have in my life and the things that are to come in my life so I have no doubt about it that I'm I'm now on the right track. I can finally say that to you all and be honest about it because I feel as though this 48-hour fast, and if you look at it from a 72-hour period where I really put my body through an enormous amount of um, stress with the physiology and also the mental aspect of it all, and I've come out the other side and I feel absolutely fantastic. And there's, you know, there's so many similarities here about finishing a marathon race. You feel adulation, you feel like you're an absolute winner but unlike that process where I had to go and load up on sugar afterwards to keep that high going I feel naturally high still already because my body feels healthier already now I know this is a process and a 48 hour fast is not a quick fix to being healthy but it is what I would call the gateway to a new life opportunity and that's what I'm treating it as I'm treating it as the gateway to a new life opportunity and I'm committed to that new life opportunity and I wanted to share this episode with you all today because shortly on the Global Travel Channel podcast show we're starting a wellness series and my friends Natalie and Jessica are going to be your main hosts for that show we start next Wednesday and it's going to be all in part of trying to help you all get healthy and not only in a nutritional state but also in an emotional spiritual and mental state because once we all start traveling again and once we all start getting back to our life don't we owe it to ourselves to be in the best possible condition that we can be in to get the most out of it and I think this period of time and history of the world has taught us so many things and one of those things is have we been really maximizing our life to the fullest and in my case the answer has been no because I've been letting myself down with a very poor nutritional choice and I'm changing that and I have changed it so I'm preparing myself for the new life for the new world and making sure that I'm going to be in the best possible emotional spiritual and physical shape that I can at this stage of my life irrespective of how old I am because I think that's irrelevant it's about how much am I prepared to invest in myself and how accountable am I prepared to make it for myself so there we go folks that's been my journey on my 48 hour fast or my 72 hour epic hunger experience I hope some of this has been useful to you I hope there's some motivation in there to think about how you're looking after yourself today on every aspect of your life and if you want to ask me any questions related to my 48 hour fast experience please reach out on social media and have a chat I'm happy to share everything I went through although I think I've pretty much done that here but um, there's not much more to say in terms of I drank green tea and water Uh, I bonked out at 26 hours on the first attempt but I made it on the second attempt to 48 hours and I guess what's next well what next is starting the new nutritional regime making sure that I cut sugar out process sugar out of my life um, keeping my exercise and physical regime to what I'm doing now because it's working and it's making me feel fantastic and making sure that I learn from my experiences and I think some of the big takeaways from this particular experience have been I used to eat far too much food because it's amazing when you take away food how little you actually need so for all these people out there who are laughing at me right now and saying well yeah I'm I'm a person that just grazes five or six times a day on small amounts of food well I wasn't that person I was the person that would have three big meals a day and then 
snacks in between. So I was eating so much food. And what this 48-hour fast has taught me is I don't need anywhere near any of that. So I anticipate that the volume of food, not only the quality of the food that I eat, but the volume of food that I'm now going to be eating is going to reduce dramatically. And I'm going to do a 48-hour fast once a month. So it's going to become a a regime within my lifestyle. I'm not going to do it at an extreme level where I do it weekly. I don't think that's going to be good for me. But I am going to do it once a month. And it's going to be really interesting to see the changes, if there are any, as I go through from month to month. So if you're interested to know and follow that process, let me know and I'll keep you up to date. Uh, and anything else that you want to ask me about the 48-hour fasting process. So there we go, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this particular episode. It is a bonus episode. It's not talking about travel, but it's talking about wellness and ourselves. Don't forget, we've got the wellness series starting with Natalie and Jessica next Wednesday here on the Global Travel Channel podcast show. Those two wonderful ladies are going to share all sorts of amazing advice and tips and take you through a whole series every Uh, every month on a Wednesday and it's going to help you change your life if you're ready to do it and there's the key if you're ready to do it I know I am and I'm going to go back to it right now so thank you for listening I wish you all a fantastic week ahead with lots of happiness and lots of healthy eating until we meet again next time my name's Mark Philpott Till I get up Time is barely on our side I don't want to waste what's left The storms we chase are leading us